at the um, High Performance Client Side Web Program with Spock and Jess. Today I will present some adaptation of this work uh, for um, web uh, programming. So I will uh, briefly uh, speak about GPU <coughs> programming and then uh, about Spock, and then we will uh, look at a small um, demo of uh, web Spock and how it can uh, help uh, and uh, intensive uh, computation and uh, web content from the client. So first, uh, I've seen that uh, some people are particularly interested uh, in having a parallel computation uh, in a camel, and um, in particular, uh, parallel computation to uh, increase the performance of their programs. And uh, there has been a lot of work uh, done by, by many people around this, uh, coming from <coughs> from uh, libraries uh, such as uh, PowerMap or uh, Asymmetric <coughs> Parallel to um, more um, to alternative uh, garbage collector and one time such as uh, Multicore or Camel we've seen this morning and or Camel for Multicore. But um, all those works are focusing on uh, Multicore CPUs and uh, today we have uh, other uh, parallel architectures, highly parallel architectures in particular uh, GPUs, and um, to use those GPUs, um, we have to use uh, very complex uh, frameworks. In particular, the main two frameworks are CUDA and OpenCL, and they both demand to write two kinds of uh, programs. First, uh, kernels that will uh, run on the GPU, and that we have to write with uh, subsets of C, C++, or assembly languages that are dependent of the on the architecture you are targeting. And uh, we also have to write another kind of program that is a, a host program that will run on the CPU and that will have to manage the kernels. And uh, for this kind of uh, program, we can uh, use uh, many languages because uh, there are many bindings to the C, C++ uh, libraries that are given by CUDA and OpenCL uh, providers. So we th thought that uh, all of that was very uh, difficult to use, and I won't go into the details today, but we worked on a library for camel that we called Spock, and uh, that um, aims at uh, helping OCaml developers access uh, GPUs, but also uh, aims at uh, helping uh, high-performance uh, computing programmers to have uh, more um, easy to use uh, tools. And um, just to show you briefly how it works, uh, Spock is based on the CUDA and OpenCL, and so it can target uh, GPU and multicore CPU through OpenCL. And uh, on top of the CUDA and OpenCL uh, libraries, we've built several things. First, the Spock runtime, that is an OCaml library that is uh, focusing on the management of, the, of data that have to be transferred between CPU memory and GPU memory. And coming with Spock, we have uh, built a domain-specific language, SAREC, that is dedicated to the GPGPU kernels. And on top of all that, we built uh, some parallel skeletons that are, in fact, map, pipe, reduce, things like that, that uh, helps uh, abstract the um, parallel uh, algorithms we want to run on our GPU and also uh, help us provide uh, optimization, uh, automatic optimization to uh, the programs. Uh, with this, Spock is also, comp also compatible to, with um, native kernels, written with CUDA or OpenCL, and also with uh, external libraries uh, that uh, are provided by multiple uh, people uh, using CUDA or OpenCL. So last year, when I presented this, I. Uh, 
asked for your feedbacks uh, and, uh, and I hoped to have a lot of feedbacks. Uh, uh, we had feedbacks, but uh, mainly not from the OCaml community, more from the um, <coughs> HPC community. And uh, we thought that maybe uh, it was too hard to use. Uh, we have to, uh, to install a lot of uh, software to have the, all the correct uh, uh, environment to run the, the programs on our GPUs. So we thought maybe we can uh, help uh, with this. And why not uh, do something that can uh, help uh, build program uh, that can directly run on our web browser. So for that we uh, did something <coughs> quite simple. We used Spock uh, and uh, we kept the, the OCaml part of Spock. And uh, with this we can uh, compile programs uh, using uh, OCaml find uh, as usual and uh, linking it with the Spock library. And then from the bytecode that is uh, generated, we can use a JS of a camel with a JavaScript um, file that contains all the necessary uh, primitives to um, use a GPU from a web browser. In fact, it's based on WebCL, that is an adaptation of uh, OpenCL for web browser. And then with all that, we will uh, generate a JavaScript uh, uh, program that can run on your browser and uh, use the, the client GPU uh, to do the intensive computation. So that's, uh, that's the main uh, idea. And we think that it's also useful to build a very intensive uh, web application, for example, uh, photo editing uh, software that could uh, benefit from the client uh, resources instead of using uh, very powerful uh, servers. So I won't go into the details of the of Spark, Web Spark, uh, etc. But I will uh, try to do a little uh, demo. So for that, I'm using uh, IOCamelJS uh, that has been pre presented before today. Well, briefly. So first, uh, we have to, of course, open the Spark uh, module, and then here we have uh, a camel. So it's not uh, OCaml code, it's uh, Sarek, the DSL. It uh, may look uh, like OCaml, but it's more like a mini C or mini Pascal. And it's very, uh, it's imperative, it's, very simple. it's a very simple language. So here the idea is that uh, this kernel will take a vector, V, uh, as an input, which contains um, pixels of a picture that we will see later, and will uh, trans transform the, this pixel in order to show a gray uh, picture where there were colors before. So it's very uh, simple, I hope. And I can uh, evaluate this. Yes, it's working. And uh, we can see that from this or a syntax extension that is in camel before currently, uh, we'll build a no camel uh, object, which uh, with the uh, oh, with many uh, methods that can be used to compile the, this code to actual uh, OpenCL or CUDA um, source code. And we can, of course, execute this, uh, this kind of code on the GPU, as we will see later. So what we want is that we want to manage our web page with a camel and do intensive computation on the content of the web page. So here, all those slides are, in fact, the web page. And uh, for example, in this slide, I have an image that is uh, hidden and that we will work with uh, later on the, <coughs> on the demo, when in fact uh, right now. So here it's a uh, JS of OCaml code, so I won't go into the details. What you have to know is that right here I want to gain access to the picture that was uh, hidden in the previous slide. And um, in the following uh, code, I want to show this picture in the canvas that should be in the following slide. Well, currently the following slide is empty. If I come back here, is it could be. I can adjust it sometimes a little bit slow. So here, now we have the picture. Classic. One. Here we have exactly the same kind of code, 
that is used to show the picture uh, in the end of the computation, so I won't go into the detail for that. What's useful is those two functions that are used to translate the picture to a vector that, is, uh, that can be used by uh, Sarek and that can be uh, transferred to the GPU and uh, transfer back the data to a picture. So. Okay. And now we have the GPGPU part of the program. So first I want to initialize the system to gain access to all the GPUs on my uh, device. So here we can only use OpenCL because, uh, as I said, we are using WebCL as a backend, and uh, WebCL is uh, well OpenCL for the web. We can't use CUDA on a web browser, so we have to specifically, uh, explicitly say that we want to use OpenCL. Then I only want to keep GPUs. I don't want to use uh, my multi-core CPUs uh, for this demo, and I want to use the first GPU on my system because I have multiple GPUs. In there. I want to use the best one for, for the demo. So then I have to do some difficult thing, and I don't, here again, I don't want to go into GPGP, I don't want to do a GPGPU course. So uh, I'll be brief. I have to declare uh, how many uh, threads will run on the GPU, and uh, in particular, how many times the kernel that, we, that we've seen before will be uh, run on the GPU. And, uh, for that, I have to write uh, all this, uh, this code. In fact, I want to run one thread for each pixel on my uh, picture. And uh, for now, that's it. So as you can see, I have uh, many information on the devices, uh, <coughs> on the devices <coughs> that can be used by the programmers to tune their programs, but can also be used by uh, a more advanced function to automatically optimize some of the code. And now I want to run uh, computations. For that, I want first to translate my picture to a vector and then to run the kernel we've seen uh, at the beginning on my GPU and uh, then put the resulting picture in uh, one of the next uh, slides. Effectively, want to run these. So no, no, the picture is uh, great. Probably not very uh, impressive, but uh, it's uh, the GPU on my computer that did all the computation from the web page. So just to make sure of that, I will just change a little the, the kernel. For example, to keep only the green part of the picture. Oh, the green part. And go back. It's green now. It seems to work. So, to conclude, um, WebSpark can help, as I said, to develop um, complex web applications with uh, intensive computation. Uh, but it's also a perfect tool, I think, for uh, demos and tutorials, in particular when it's uh, used with uh, IOCAMLJS that uh, can uh, help uh, show and write code uh, directly and use it uh, from a web browser. Uh, we think that it may be uh, simpler to use than uh, classical uh, GPGPU tools because we only have to have uh, a browser. So, fairly simple. But there is still a work for it to be uh, as uh, efficient as a Spock that is the <coughs> mainly uh, due to uh, the fact that uh, the garbage collector that is uh, embedded into web browser is not very um, customizable uh, and uh, Spock uh, heavily relies on the, the OCaml garbage collector to manage the data in particular uh, to uh, free a vector on a GPU memory so for now it's not possible to do that with uh, WebSpock uh, we have to 
transfer back the data on the CPU to be sure that the garbage collector of the web browser will uh, deallocate the vectors later in the program. So we have to write a specific memory manager for JavaScript for Spock vectors. Uh, and uh, we would also, also like to work on bindings with uh, WebGL uh, in order to have uh, more uh, interactive uh, applications uh, uh, with intensive computations uh, uh, on, the, on our web browser, all of that in a type safe uh, environment with the camera and JS of the camera. So this demo is online, which means that you can run all this code, but you can also um, modify it and test your own kernels and uh, your own code uh, from the, this web page. So uh, I hope that uh, this will uh, help you uh, test it and uh, help you give us more feedbacks, uh, at least more than uh, last year. And um, for that, you only have to have uh, Firefox and uh, a small plugin uh, <coughs> from uh, Nokia. And uh, by the way, uh, Spock and Sarek are also uh, available for classic uh, system applications and can be installed through OPA. So you can also test it and uh, give us some feedback on this uh, version of uh, Spock. So thank you. If you have any questions. Uh, two quick questions. Is Nokia research the same thing as Microsoft research? Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. Well, they said they said they are not uh, related to Microsoft. Uh, as a as a, a recovery came out before user, uh, I noticed that beside the camp keyword, the only change you had in your uh, extension or DSL was the array access syntax. Yeah. And you managed to pick one that is worse than the current one we have in the command. Uh, I also have array. I also have arrays, uh, arrays and uh, well strings. So uh, I want to differentiate uh, all of them and uh, okay, well, fine, just <coughs> Thank you, Matthias. Is the potential to run this code on the GPU of a mobile phone at all? Not yet. Uh, probably in the near future, but not yet. 